All right, in this video, we're gonna take a look at the common garden snail, genus name Helix. This is one that's been preserved, and we're gonna take a look at it, but let's look at the external anatomy on this specimen. So of course, we have the coiled shell. Then we have the muscular foot that runs the length of the body. Then there are two pairs of tentacles. They're a little bit tough to see on this specimen, but there is a posterior set of tentacles here and an anterior set that are located up here that in this specimen have been retracted. On the right-hand side of the body, this little spot right here, you see a little bit a lighter color, that is the genital pore or the genital opening. Up underneath the edge, in fact, on this specimen, you can see it. Up underneath the edge of the shell is an opening right in here called the pneumostome. And this is where this terrestrial snail draws in air and uses its uh, mantle cavity as a lung. Instead of housing gills, it has vascular tissue surrounding it. So that is the external anatomy of the snail. And of course, the head, the mouth is here. And so I need to remove the shell in preparation for the next step. All right, so our specimen now has the shell removed and we can take a look at some of the soft structures. So if we just rotate it slightly to its right and look at it head on, this thickened area right here is the collar. This is found right under the edge of the leading edge of the, uh, of the shell. And this sac-like structure just posterior to it is the mantle cavity. And if you look carefully, if you had a specimen in front of you, you would be able to see there is vascularization. There are vessels lining the surface of this structure so that when air gets pulled in here, it has a large surface area, moist, and gas exchange can take place. If we look at some other anatomical structures, if we look up here at the top, well, let me just rotate it this way. This is the posterior end of the foot back here. And then up here, at the very top of the coil, we have ovotestis up in here. Then just posterior or below that, we have this material in here is digestive gland. And then beneath that, we have, um, I can't really see it from this angle. If we rotate this around, this material in the back includes oviduct and other material. So what I'm going to do now, oops, sorry, got a little bit out of frame. What I'm going to do now is open up the mantle cavity so that you can see the structure of that. All right, so what I've done is I have pulled the top of the mantle, or I've cut, clipped the edge of the mantle along the connection so that the collar is cut right here and flipped outwards over here. And so this is the edge of the collar and you can see vascularization in the dorsal wall of the mantle cavity. So that's what I wanted you to see with that. Okay, so I've opened up the dorsal body wall of the, uh, of the snail, and there is a lot of stuff in there. I mean, it looks like there's all kinds of things, and there are all kinds of things. Well, let's look at a few of the things that we can identify pretty easily. So, first of all, this structure right here that's sort of lying on top that curls around like this, this is the penis and it's attached posteriorly. There's a muscle attaching it back here. You can see that so that the penis can be retracted after fertilization has happened. This thread-like 
structure coming off of the penis is called the flagellum. Down here, we have this structure that looks a little bit like, you know, um, a brush-like structure. This is a salivary gland, and this bulbous structure is the dart sac. You can see this if you look on page, or figure 7.10 in the lab manual. So the dart sac, the penis, and we have the, uh, the mucous glands. Now, other tubes that are in here, it takes some doing to tease this apart, but there are, you see this one that looks kind of, this one right here, underneath the penis? That one is the vas deferens. And if you follow it back farther, there's all this frilly material back here. That is oviduct that leads from the ovary. And the ovary and the testes are both right up here at the top, like this. Now underneath all this stuff, if I can pull it aside, what we have down here, first of all, is this little collar right here. You see how it kind of wraps around everything? This is the pharynx, this is the esophagus, and this little collar that wraps around everything is your um, cerebral ganglia. It's a nerve ring that wraps around and has extensions that goes up and you can't see it because of the way that the animal has been opened up, but there's an extension that goes up to this way and up this way into the tentacles. So this is nervous tissue and the esophagus comes back here to a large dige digestive gland or actually a crop that we find along underneath all this stuff that runs back up into here <clears throat> and terminates in a digestive gland. So I guess for our purposes, since you don't have the, the luxury of seeing this firsthand, um, let me just tease some of this stuff apart so you can see it a little easier. <clears throat> Excuse me. The best way to do this, by the way, is with two forceps. <clears throat> Most people, when they want to do a dissection, the first thing they reach for is a scalpel. They want to cut something. They want to be a doctor. But when you work on invertebrates, these micro-dissections really work a lot better if you use a pair, <coughs> excuse me, a pair of forceps to separate things. So I'm going to pull on this and detach the muscle so we can lay the penis out this way. I'm going to pull the dart sack out this direction and actually I'm going to secure that in place so I'll secure this out here the penis out here so it doesn't flop back over on top of other structures the dart sack which produces like you would imagine darts and these darts are used when they copulate with one another, they fire these darts into each other, which apparently is a way to stimulate the other, other participant to produce or release their reproductive material. So we've got the dart sac, the mucous glands, the penis, and then we've got a whole array of... Um, so we've got the uh, vas deferens coming down through here, as well as the oviduct, and on this specimen, it's not that easy to see all of that. I'm just going to open this up a little bit more so we can see some of the structures down inside of there. This is the dorsal wall of the mantle cavity still. You can, you can tell because of the vascularization on it. So I just want to get that out of the way. And this yellowish material in here <clears throat> this is going to be your kidney, and there's going to be a loop of the intestine that comes up here. And the loop of the intestine comes around and follows this line right here and terminates right here. So this intestine comes around here and terminates right at the pneumostome, or the, this excurrent opening, so it can release its feces. So with this other material released, this structure right here is the crop, 
and you can see that's a salivary gland. It's going along one side of the crop, and if we could roll it over, we would see that there's another one on the other side. And all this other stuff underneath it are muscles of the foot that we're not going to worry about. Then we have this little structure right here, this little bulb. That's the copulatory bursa. So most of this material up in here is reproductive. If we pull it aside, you know, leave the crop over here, all of this material, the dart sac, penis, mucus glands, vas deferens, oviduct that run through here are all reproductive. This over here, <clears throat> we have pharyngeal bulb, esophagus, this is the cerebral ganglia wrapped around it. Crop, which comes back here, turns the corner, goes into the, uh, uh, the intestine, loops back around, and releases its material. And up in here, we have ovotestis at the top. This other material in here, this is the vitellin gland or the yolk gland. Um, sometimes it's called the, al in, our, in the textbook, in the lab manual, it's called the albumin gland for producing the yolk. And that is a walk through the internal anatomy of helix. It's, it's really easy to turn one of these into what, you would, what we would call a dissection bomb crater. But this one was pretty, um, pretty cooperative in terms of what we were able to see.